Okay, for our uh, framework plan, we are looking at um, Wind Place or Spring Grove Village, depending on your choice. Not having been there, or a lot of us having lived in Cincinnati hadn't really been there or didn't realize where it was until someone told us that Kroger was there. So that was our first inclination that this place was lacking a sense of place, it was lacking a lot of amenities and lacking character that uh, you'd like to look for in a great area. So we sort of, we went there first thing. We started to look at some of the problems that we perceived. First of all, um, it's a very industrial area which is not in itself bad, but there was very inefficient use of pervious <coughs> pavements. There was not a lot of landscaping of any sort, and uh, there was really not much to look at. In addition, um, there was just a lot of resources there that were really not being tapped. So um, the main things that we were trying to look at are uh, creating a sense of identity for the area. Also. Um, creating smart development for the industries and uh, creating amenities for the people that live there. So um, if you want to look at our area, we, we kind, of, kind of created three areas, or these are existing. We have the uh, residential area, this is an industrial region, and this is all zoned for, con uh, for commercial uses. And uh, traditionally, you don't like to have industrial areas butted up right next to res residential areas, so immediately we realize that there needs to be some sort of smart buffering within these areas, so we're proposing some uh, some green buffering in between these areas. And uh, in addition, we're looking at the light rail proposals in the city of Cincinnati, and uh, there is slated in the uh, preliminary plans to be a wind place station, so we decided to strategically locate that within a uh, proposed development, transit-oriented development down here, which we'll get into later. Um, in talking to some of the representatives from the area and the city in general, one of the uh, largest problems that we didn't immediately understand was the uh, potential for stormwater management. That was the number one issue that everyone was talking to us about. So we specifically decided to look at the industrial areas, look where there were room for improvement and start to entertain the ideas of uh, using permeable pavers, green roofs, and other sort of rainwater mitigation strategies. Um, so it's a good, a good understanding of our strategy for the framework plan is to sort of uh, search out the three different districts we wanted to talk about, which are the residential, the industrial, and this beginning of a retail district down here. <coughs> then we were, um, so we, we thought we would give each of these sort of an anchoring institution, uh, which is where each of our interventions took place, uh, with Quinn and Ryan working on the TOD and retail development here. Uh, I was working on an industrial business incubator here, and Caroline working on an, um, an old neighborhood business district up here. So after we developed these different districts with their anchoring institutions uh, to deal with the problems of runoff and buffering between the zones, we introduced these green collars, which sort of permeate throughout all of our projects. They're there for visual reasons as much, but even yeah. more so about treating run or rainwater runoff and that sort of thing. Right. Should we start with stuff? Um, I looked at the gateways in Wind Place. Um, I started off by identifying the primary gateways and the secondary gateways. Um, so for each gateway, um, you can see we started off with the Mitchell Avenue Interstate I-75 um, interchange. Um, it is currently already being uh, worked on by the Beautification um, Project of Ohio, so um, that area even with the, the new change, the I-75 corridor should still, I propose it should still um, incorporate the beautification project. Um, up here, we start off coming down Mitchell. Um, this is the entrance to the Spring Grove Village. So this is the existing signage that you see. Um, I, I think that something more concrete and with materials that are more natural would give the area a more grounded sense. And also, coming down Mitchell Avenue, um, consistent streetscape design. 
So having buffers along all sidewalks, lamp posts, and consistent signage would also help the area. Um, then we moved down to the primary intersection of <coughs> Mitchell and Spring Grove, um, which is right here. Um, so what? What it, this is like the green intersection that I think would work well right here. This is all commercial on either all the corners. So um, this this just shows the existing conditions. So you see Superior Honda, Advanced Auto Parts, Rallies, and a car wash. The corner that I think could use the most work is the area where the car wash is. Um, you can see it's pretty dilapidated and it abuts right up to the railroad. Um, so having some sort of Stepping terrace with vegetation would help reduce stormwater runoff for the area, um, and also a, like some like a park in that area would um, give the area more of a sense of place. Um, and then we move down to Clifton Avenue um, to provide for um, access to Wind Place other than automobile. Um, I th think that a pedestrian bridge with bicycle access would help the area since there's um, sidewalks leading all the way up Clifton Avenue and it, they, it leads right to the Kroger's which is um, a place that a lot of people from Clifton seem to go to. Okay. Oh yeah. We looked at the uh, TOD um, where the current Kroger is. Uh, starting with a case study of uh, Davis Square in Somerville, Massachusetts. Um, it's similar to our area because it started with a kind of dilapidated uh, industrial and commercial area on a major rail line. Um, and its residents and politicians had the chance to lobby for a light rail station that uh, the Area Transit Authority was proposing. Um, and it revitalized the area into a new commercial and institutional area. So um, very similar to, kind of to uh, our plans, what we want to do with the area. Does the silver line go this to today? That's the red line. Oh, it's the red line. Oh, yes. so way back. Okay. And on the outskirts of Boston. Um, for our plan, what we're working with originally is the Kroger that is probably the number one institution in what's in place as far as, uh, you know, retail numbers and also just, like I mentioned before, sense of place, what everyone does when place for. Um, therefore, we decided that the Kroger is pretty much the anchoring institution for our framework here. We're going to leave it and try to create smarter development around it. As originally the Kroger's parking lot took up almost 50% of this entire site, whereas there were some other very uh, low density, hardscaped areas just all along the Mill Creek. And what we're proposing to do is create more density parking structures to mitigate some of the uh, excessive hardscaping and uh, try to really spike use of the area with uh, new new commercial functions and as well one of the main component one of the main components is that we're adding a substantial amount of housing at least uh, 100 units here um, from reading about TODs it's it's always a very uh, crucial idea to provide housing so that you have that crucial mix within your community of having people living there working there shopping there traveling there um, so essentially what we're looking at here is a group of, here, here we have Kroger, we're looking at creating ground retail and uh, two to three stories of office above, and uh, this would be the, this would be the residential community here. And really uh, beyond that, we've really, we've created this density here that we're, that we're able to thin out the rest of this property and create a sort of uh, a buffer going through here. So what we have now is the ability to have this sort of lowland forest surrounding the site and then we'll step it down to an urban prairie that will start the filtration process and then we would like to uh, start working on a constructed wetland along the Mill Creek which is part of the uh, Mill Creek restoration project that's already in the planning phases down the Mill Creek. So uh, we'd like to continue that through our site. Presently it's kind of made its way up to Salway Park which is just adjacent so 